Well, it looked like it could have been a lot worse if you go back to this scary incident with Kyrie and his eye and Marco Bellinelli. Uh, it could have been much worse than a scratch and then what was called an irritation and missed a couple of games. Uh, either of you guys ever have a, an eye poke scenario in a game? Yeah, I actually had a, a, a torn tear duct. And um, it is, um, it was painful, but I, I, I think when, whenever you get hit in the eye, uh, you, you really just kind of lose it. And you, you're scared because you lose your, your eyesight, it's blurry and everything just for a minute or so. But, you know, the doctors and everybody are so good right now that they're able to get you back playing as we see Kyrie tonight. That was a lot of information, good information. Hey, you don't ask me, don't ask me the question then. Hey, hey, don't Four guys ask me the question made that great graphic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. All right, let's get serious. Kyrie, uh, well, was that the defense traveling, was, was that just a sweet I was more concerned about the paint being completely wide open. But yeah, I, think I mean, that travel. too. Maybe yeah. travel. There's a travel. A little bit. Uh, it's been uh, travels from one year to another for Jason Tatum. Obviously, different group. How he plays with Kyrie, without Kyrie. Nice ball movement. Gordon Hayward, he had 12 points and eight boards. And, Ken, it's not easy for Scary Terry to get all that hype and all that performance last year and then kind of get back into the background this year been tough for him. Well, there's been a number of games that he's come in and saved them, you know, from the defensive end, bringing that tenacity, being able to score the basketball. So, I mean, he can contribute in more than just scoring. Uh, Zeke said earlier in the night something jumping out of a beard. How about out of Jarrett Allen's hair? I mean, not only out of his hair, I, he's got hands jumping, jump, <laughs> jumping out of his hair because lately he's been blocking everybody's dunk. Yeah, not that shot from Kyrie. Watch this nice little look here to Daniel Tyson. Kyrie, 17.6 assists, three steals in his return. Scary Terry, uh, wide open. 10 points, four boards, four assists, and then the athleticism, Zika, Robert Williams, the third. Oh, yeah. He's got hops. Mm. Now Raw talent. Just, now if he can just be on time for the bus. Well, you know. <laughs> We've all hit snooze once or twice. Win by 21. For Kyrie, 17, five and double figures, and the Celtics, their 24th victory of the season. So where do they stand in the East? Well, they're battling a bunch of teams, including the Milwaukee Bucks, who people did not talk nearly enough about before the year. We did talk a lot about him and Donovan Mitchell, though. Uh, this guy, Giannis. Wait, who is that? Uh, yeah, he, well, I don't. You, oh, yeah. based on the outfit, you couldn't tell, right? Oh, I couldn't see. Yeah, I didn't know who that was. Does anybody understand the... the is there a... I, I know fear of the deer. Do we understand the colors here? I mean, if he's playing like that, we're fearing whatever jersey he's wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, unfortunately, uh, you've been fearing all sorts of hamstring issues. Exum already down. Ricky Rubio did not return. Uh, they say it's a thigh injury. Uh, scored nine of the last uh, Jazz 11 points before he left the game. They're down two, which means Donovan Mitchell to step up. What have you seen, Zeke, from him is now not a surprise to anybody this year? Well, he, he's on the board now. He, he's one of those players who's the first, you know, scouting report on the board, and every defense is geared toward stopping him. So as the season progresses, he's got to figure out how to continue to score, how to continue to get his teammates involved, and he's got to be a shot maker from the perimeter. Donovan at 26, Giannis and everything else. Candace, this is well, a problem. You can't stop him and defend him one on one, especially in training. Watch this on Gobert. I, I mean, I mean, nobody does that to Gobert. <laughs> well, he does. Yeah, he doesn't anyone. I mean, it's not even fair. He had 30 points. I mean, <laughs> I think you 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 played against some great athletes and guys with lots of size. I mean. Have we ever seen anybody with this kind of a skill set that I, he's got? I, I, I've said this before. In, in this generation, the, the two most unique players that we've seen in this league, and, and probably three when you throw in Anthony Davis, is, is Kevin Durant, mm -hmm. seven foot with a crossover in a three. And then Giannis, with the stuff that he's doing, we've, we've never seen guys like this in our league at seven feet tall with these kind of skill sets and can do it at such a high level with such intensity. So, I mean, you know, there, there are a lot of kids that are growing up now who are saying they want to be like KD and they want to be like Giannis because those are the two guys who are 
you know, setting the standards. Let's talk about these two teams, kind of where they sit in the East. Let's start with the Celtics because we've talked about this, Candace, in a, in a couple of different ways tonight. And I'll go back to when we talked about Doncic throughout the course of, of this evening, and that is the way that the team looks at him and says, go ahead, you shoot. When Kyrie wasn't there last year, that was Jason Tatum. And it's not that it couldn't have been Scary Terry one night or Jalen Brown, but you go back to that series against LeBron, and I mean, I don't know how you get more impressed with the way that Tatum was shot for shot in all of those moments. As a player, how difficult is that? And I want to talk about him a bit specifically, for him to go through that, and now you've got Kyrie, you know who Kyrie is and what he is, and you're trying to kind of not step on his toes, but also keep that aggression that made you the player you are. Well, I think those are the growing pains that you saw them going through at the beginning of this season. People were questioning whose team this was, Kyrie Irving or Jason Tatum. And it was almost laughable uh, as a player that has played because you realize whose team this is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jason Tatum had great games during the playoffs. Yes. But in terms of a player that has won a championship, that has proven himself, that has done this consistently, obviously it's in Kyrie Irving. But how do you best fit them together? Because you're yeah. going to need both of them to win a series to get to the to the finals. And they didn't win that series against LeBron. Yep. And I think the experience that he gained from that was positive as well as maybe a, it, it, he took a couple steps back cuz this year the expectations were higher. Yeah. He wasn't going to go through those and when he scores 7 points this year it's like, "Well, what's wrong with Jason Tatum?" Yeah. When actually it's growing pains. I mean, he's still young. He's still trying to fit himself into the philosophy of the way that the Celtics play. Yeah, and, and, there, and there are no more throwaway shots. You know, when, when Kyrie and Hayward wasn't there, you can, you can miss two or three. Right. And, and, and it was coming right back to you. But now, okay, if you miss two or three, okay, Kyrie's got it. Okay, Hayward's got it. So that, that ball is not coming back to you as much as it was last year because now you got two extra scores out on the floor. But they can adjust, and they have adjusted. I say this, though, and I ask you from a championship standpoint, the necessity of having multiple guys. Kyrie knows that even though LeBron is LeBron, including one incredible shot, which to me I think is a bigger shot than any LeBron's hit in his career, just being fair, Kyrie hit shot after shot after shot. Kyrie's going to be the LeBron when you get to a playoff series, right, Zeke? I mean, you've been in that spot where they're going to say, we have to try and find a way in those big moments to eliminate him. So he's going to have to, right, rely on Jason Tatum in some of those opportunities. Yeah, and, 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 I, would, and, I, would, and I would also, you know, ask you this question too because, you know, as, as the best player on the team, right. as Kyrie is offensively, right, what LeBron showed was that not only was he the best player, but he's also a great leader. Right now, what Kyrie's challenge is right now is, can you become the great leader? Can you can you galvanize? Can you energize? Can you inspire? Right? Can can you do that with your teammates? And that's what he's got to prove that he can do. And that's what I had to do, and I and I know you had to do it also. Well, I don't think that, and I I hate to continue to bring Golden State into this. Mm -hmm this conversation. Well, they've won a lot. They've won a lot. But, I mean, that's in every conversation. <laughs> a little. Yeah. They weren't but, in John Schumann's power rankings. Yeah, at okay. all. So, John Schumann is the only one that doesn't have them <laughs> winning a lot. But, you know, it is extremely impressive for the ability for all of them to fit. Mm -hmm. And what was the reasoning because of that? It was because of Steph Curry. Yeah. He welcomed that. He wanted talent. He wanted to play alongside great players. Because, you know what? One game, it's your game. The next game, next series, it's your matchup. And so I think that's kind of the focus that Boston has to have, that maybe tonight I'm not going to get 20 shots, but the next series or the next game, I'm going to be very important. You both know this. Those at home know this. What I want to see, we saw Raptors last year try to extend a rotation like a regular season. You can't do that in the playoffs. That's going to be the interesting thing for me. Who's going to get their minutes taken back? Because you got so many guys who did it last year or did it this year. Yeah. Is it going to be a Jalen Brown? Is it going to be a Hayward? Yeah. Right? I mean, I, there's a decision to make sure. there for uh, Brad Stevens. Yeah. Stay tuned, NBA TV. Um, don't take away any of Luca's minutes unless they're at uh, a, a drinking establishment. He's 19. 19 years old. Uh, Legal overseas. It seems like uh, how many years all those <laughs> Spurs were playing? <laughs> we'll be back with game time, Candace. And how would you know that? I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> Legal overseas.
The Milwaukee Bucks taking on the Utah Jazz. That game's going to be on NBA League Pass just minutes from now. now. The Jazz have won two in a row, both on the road, three of their last four overall. Meanwhile, the Bucks are coming off a loss, and they haven't lost consecutive games this season. A perfect 10-0 following a loss. Let's hear Coach Quinn Snyder with Craig Bowlerjack prior to the game. This is game number 41 tonight. What's your thought? Well, it's, it's hard to believe. Uh, we were walking on the, the uh, just coming to practice and walking on the street today, and um, you know you still see some Christmas decorations. And Christmas seems like it was two months ago. So um, it's happened fast, and we're uh, you know we're growing. I think we're we're a better team now than when we started the year, and that's to me. I know you know you, you'd love for the record to. Yeah, I think you always want the record to be better. Right. Um, but I think the you know as we as we continue to play and tonight and the next game and beyond, if we can continue to improve, um, that'll serve us well. You know, speaking of getting better, listen. Let me take you back to Detroit because you were down 18, but a dynamic second half, offensively and defensively. You guys are very active, and Donovan seemed to be the guy that led the charge. Yeah, you know, really, and, and you mentioned Donovan in the second half, and he certainly did. I think um, in the second quarter, um, really. When Dante and Tabo were in the game, the way those two guys played, and it was tough to see both of them, you know, take an injury because they, those two guys, you could really feel. Tabo played the rest of the second quarter. Dante had like five assists in six minutes, and hard to lose them in that game. And would have also been really easy with those two guys playing well for the rest of the team to kind of let up, and and that didn't happen. And you know, Donovan as much or more than anyone. Um, really midway through the third quarter, he came back in and he really dug in defensively. And I think he just, the game just started kind of unfolding for him. And he was instinctive and he was really good. Yeah, he really was. Uh, Coach, uh, finally, we're in Milwaukee, which is the home of Yantas Antetokounmpo. And when you speak of him, I mean, just one word pops up. It's just unique. Yeah. Maybe you have more. Terrific, yeah. There's a lot of superlatives yeah. that you can use to describe him. Um, and Bud's done an unbelievable job, you know, helping him um, bring all those talents out kind of exponentially. But um, some of the statistics that you see um, that are unique, nobody scored more in the point in the paint um, since Shaq. So you look at a guy and, you know, he's basically a modern day Shaq. He's not doing it with post ups all the time. He's doing it more off, you know, dribble penetration and transition. But um, he's a really unique player and, and that makes it it's hard because he's so good, but it's also hard because he's so different. Coach Snyder also mentioned Dante Exum's ankle injury. He's reportedly going to be out for the next two weeks. So before I ask you about their matchup with the Milwaukee Bucks, I want to ask why the slow start for the Utah Jazz, a young team that we were expecting to see take a big jump at the start of the season. I think a couple of things that jump out at me. When you look at their record right now, they've played 16 home games. They've played 24 away games, and here they are in Milwaukee again tonight. And the fact that they have a 20 and 20 record, just a game and a half out of the playoffs in the Western Conference, I think says a whole lot. The same thing is Donovan Mitchell didn't start out the season the same way that he finished up last season, but so did a couple other guys in the league that we've talked about tonight. Didn't start out great, like James Harden, mm -hmm. but he's on fire right now. So if Donovan Mitchell gets back to the form that we saw last year where he was just simply sensational, and then a couple of these nagging little injuries where guys miss three, four, five games, you couple that with the brutal schedule, this team's in a great spot to make a run in the second half of the season. Let me ask you, Kevin, because you and I talk a lot about these young players who the team tends to, well, the league tends to figure out in their mm -hmm. sophomore season. Do you think that that's the case here with Donovan? No question. When you take the league by storm like Mitchell did, especially the second half of last year, Everybody now, you're the number one guy in the scouting report. So the coach stands in front of the group in the morning before the game and says, this is how we're stopping Donovan Mitchell. I'm putting my best defenders on him. I'm forcing him left. He likes to pull up. Whatever your tendencies are, they say we're taking your favorite tendency away, making you play to your, your weaknesses, not your strength. And I, as a young player in this league, it's like a chess match. You start off with the same opening in your chess match five, six times in a row. Finally, the guy says, you're not doing that. You're not beating me with that. You have to change up. I always, I've told this story before. I remember the first time I played in the playoff series against really talented players that were really smart, were Kyle Wall Jones and Bobby Jones, and they played for Philadelphia 76ers. So I had the move where I'd fake left, turn around, fade away, jump shot. Hell, Bobby Jones jumped before I did. He blocked it. I mean, he just, I, I didn't anybody block that shot since I don't know when. And I was like, 
dang, like I got to come up with plan B here. They made you play to plan B. They took away your favorite move, and that made me a better player. And I said that Donovan Mitchell er earlier this year was going to look at film. Quinn's a really good coach, Snyder. He's going to figure out what the defenders are doing to him, and he's good enough that he'll go to plan B and C and get counters. So I think it's a tough schedule, like Mike said. And then I think it's just, you know, Donovan, the league caught up to him. Now he's figuring out what they're doing, and he's making, making the next jump. So it's just you're always doing this. As a young player, and you're trying to get here, you just you do, you do this all the way up. And he's just on his, you know, just stages of growing up that ladder. And they're taking on a Milwaukee Bucks team that's sitting 